So with three bases in my possession, one already being a sub bass, and the other back to a normal five string tuning, I was wondering what to do with this Ibanez GSR 205 I still had laying around. And I decided on something pretty crazy. Take this 34 inch scale length instrument, add another string and create a new baritone guitar. I already knew higher scale allows you to get away with thinner strings and brighter tone from the Warmoth baritone conversion neck I threw on a bullet strat. So I thought this could give me an instrument with quite a unique sound. Now, how did I get from this to this? This is Kevin from Said Too Much. I was gonna go ahead and just buy a whole new blank nut, but it was hard for me to find one online that matched this Ibanez. I figured I should try something like this anyway, cause on past projects, I've been going from different string gauges and I'm gonna have to figure out how to fill in a nut eventually. So the solution I chose was epoxy, a quick five minute set time epoxy. Although it did take almost 24 hours to get to a hardness I thought was acceptable. And in several layers too, because the empty gap was just too big to hold the epoxy up while it hardened. But after some filing down of the overflow, I was happy with the result. For adding the new six string grooves I marked out with a simple ruler and pencil, I found a hacksaw was most effective for making the initial cut, widening it with a file from there. Stringing it up, I learned the epoxy slot needs a lot of lubrication, or you'll hear really scary string slipping noises while tuning. Now the bridge gets pretty complicated. My first idea was to use this guitar bridge I had laying around with a 10.5 millimeter string spacing, but it's just not nearly wide enough to really fill out the neck. So I opted for a little bit wider string spacing, maybe more comparable to a classical style guitar. For this custom spacing, I bought individual guitar saddles, but the next issue was that they require a little more routing on the body to fit flushly, and require me to drill straight through the body and add string ferrules on the back as well, because there was no top loading option like on the old bridge. Luckily, the old bridge left two mounting holes that would easily accommodate the two new end saddles in the appropriate position. From there, I marked out the spots I would need to dremel with a crude ruler, crossed my fingers, and went to town. No turning back from here. I purposely made the routing a little bigger than needed, making sure the saddles would at least fit where they're supposed to. I taped up the holes for the strings at the bottom of the saddles, dropped a little bit more epoxy in each hole to fill in the gaps, put the saddles in and made sure they were lined up as evenly as I could visually see, then just let it dry. Not ideal, but I'm happy with my solution. Those guys are in there permanently now. You can kind of see some of the overflow epoxy that spilled out when I pushed them in. I tried to wipe up what I could, but obviously I knew it was going to be messy going in. I had also filed a spot on the bottom of each saddle to make solid contact with a strip of aluminum foil that connects to ground in the pickup wiring. I'm not sure how important it is to have the bridge grounded. Obviously most guitars have a wire routed to connect with the bridge, so I just thought I'd rather be safe than sorry. The final step was to drill straight through the body at each saddle for the strings to pass through, then drill a little wider, shallower hole on the back for the string ferrules to sit in. Again, I'm doing all this by hand, so I crossed my fingers and tried as best as I could to drill perfectly perpendicularly. I'd already tried something like this, making a seven string guitar mod. You know, I kinda like the chip finishes and imperfect placements as a stylistic choice. It's more pop punk that way, right? And I don't think it affects tone at all. The string still solidly holds the saddle down to the body for full sustain. Nobody's quite got a personalized instrument like this. Adding the extra machine head was very simple. It was easy to find one online that matched the others, and there was enough room on the headstock to fit it in and still have a nice symmetrical, kind of staggered look. The only thing I had to consider was there being a direct line between each machine head and a slot on the nut for the string. Eyeballing it by hand again, I got the hole as far over towards the machine head on the other side as I could. And then there you have it, it's like it was meant to be there. It was a little bit nerve wracking wondering whether the strings I bought would be long enough to reach the machine heads. Remember, I can't just buy bass strings because I need a smaller ball end to fit in the guitar string ferrules I bought. But I also need them to be long enough to fit all the way across to the 34 inch scale length. Luckily, I bought some strings from Callium, who aren't strangers to the idea of guitar strings having to fit practically a bass scale. And sure enough, they fit. It was calling it pretty close though on the furthest machine head. Not a lot wrapping around there. I decided to try a B standard drop A tuning for now, a good halfway point between a guitar and bass. The gauges ironically turned out to be basically a set of 11 to 52s to match the tension of a normal guitar at this tuning. Pickups are a work in progress. I didn't just want to use the five string bass pickups, so I went ahead and bought a passive ceramic humbucker that I thought would match the Strat style guitars I have. I wired it with just one simple volume knob, but upon stringing it up, I realized the poles didn't line up under the strings at all. Not nearly wide enough. 
I knew it wasn't going to be perfect and was using a fairly wide string spacing, but I drastically underestimated how far the strings would spill over. Should have done some actual measuring when thinking this through. If you put it dead center, it still technically picks up the two end strings, just not very well. I can shift the pickup around for now to clearly hear one side of the guitar at a time. I have better solutions in mind, but for now I say let's go ahead and play the thing. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't expect the string spacing to be so wide, but the more I play it, the more I like it. I can still get my fingers in there for some popping and slapping. A lot better than I could on a standard guitar, so in this way it makes it even more of a hybrid instrument. Posting my progress through this project on Instagram, a few of you brought up that the band Admiral Angry recorded using 5-string basses modded into 7-string guitars in drop D. And checking them out, I will say they have quite an interesting sound, with an interesting drum kit. Although they're not active anymore. Thinking about it more, the string spacing would have been more similar to a guitar if I had opted to add one more string instead of the six. But I like how this guy turned out. Of course there's already longer scale, six string baritone basses out there, with the notorious Fender Bass 6 and another Ibanez bass I've always been eyeing, called the Crossover. Both are beautiful basses, but also only 30 inches in scale length. And I always just couldn't help but wonder what a full bass scale length would sound like. So let me know in the comments if you guys can think of any cool things to try with this guy, whether it be certain pickups or tunings or techniques. I would love any input. I have a lot more experimenting to try with this guy. So for now, enough said. For downloads, raw instrument tracks, and more exclusives, find our community on Patreon and consider adding your support. Said too much. <laughs>